Good evening, everyone, or morning, as the case may be, for those people viewing this. Uh, I'm Ernie Lopez. A um, little background, I've been a member of the National Association since uh, 1971. I'm a member of multiple chapters uh, across the country, um, predominantly on the West Coast now, where I live. And I'm a fellow of the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors. I've been um, the director and curator of the museum's collection since, uh, since the museum first opened in September of uh, 2000. And uh, 2021 will be coming up on our 20th anniversary. Uh, this evening, uh, this will be, uh, uh, this video will focus on some of the novelty uh, timepieces we have in the museum and um, a few of our uh, uh, more important tall case clocks. Uh, starting with this, we have a very uh, massive, uh, um, oh, we, we shifted here, a very massive uh, Howard uh, Watchman's clock uh, with multiple relays. Uh, this would have been a master clock in a very important um, uh, hotel or um, um, perhaps a department store building. Uh, it's set up uh, to ring uh, bells and whistles uh, all over the, uh, the building as well as um, uh, trigger um, any number of master clocks or slave clocks throughout the building. Uh, this was a recent donation to us and uh, uh, weighs a couple hundred pounds of just the machinery in the base of the clock. And we'll move to our next slide. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the Seth Thomas uh, tower clock that came out of the San Diego, uh, the second San Diego courthouse building uh, that was, uh, that existed from 1898 to approximately 1930. Um, it's currently uh, uh, housed in a, in a custom made uh, uh, wooden case. Um, so it can be, and the pendulum has been shortened so it can be uh, used for floor display purposes. And this will uh, form centerpiece of the new museum. We'll be moving now into some of the, uh, the novelty clocks uh, in our collection. Uh, 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 we have the, uh, uh, starting out, we have the uh, uh, Ansonia uh, Oriental, uh, small uh, novelty clock uh, with some elaborate dragon uh, motif. Uh, this is a very rare uh, Linskirge uh, table clock. Uh, doesn't seem to be very photogenic to begin with, but uh, and what's not uh, shown in this video, engraved on the back of the clock are the names of, of 21 employees and the date January 1st, 1876. This was the first clock off the Linskirge production line for the year of 1876. Very well, unusual uh, timepiece. <clears throat> oh, this is an also uh, an interesting uh, little Ansonia model. Uh, I believe the trade name on this was Ruin. Uh, very nice little uh, bronze uh, Gothic style case. This is a, a very rare Ansonia uh, uh, jeweled pocket watch with the original stand that it came with. Uh, this actually has a, about a four day running movement in it. This is also by Ansonia. The, uh, the, uh, the Chinese motif uh, plate was made by Spode and it's on a uh, custom made uh, easel that uh, was provided by the factory. This is a little Waterbury novelty clock, uh, 30 hour, uh, just uh, um, uh, one of many that they offered uh, in their um, early catalogs. <clears throat> uh, we need to go the other direction. Yeah, give me give me a second. Something's hung up here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, next. There we go. All right, we got it. Oh, uh, this is uh, this is also by Ansonia. A cute little novelty clock. Uh, the trade name on this was Baby, and this can be found in the 1901 Ansonia catalog. 
Uh, also by Ansonia, uh, this is an English uh, Majolica case. Um, um, uh, there were several uh, uh, monk themed uh, clocks that Ansonia produced. And uh, the KB is, is for the uh, porcelain company that made the, uh, the case. This is also by uh, Ansonia and uh, appropriately, uh, just as it depicts the, uh, the name of the uh, clock is snail. But uh, you've got this cute little cherub riding, riding the snail. Uh, this is by the uh, Waterbury Clock Company. Uh, this is a, um, uh, a cut crystal case my, made by the, um, uh, the Libby uh, uh, Glass Company. This is a piece of uh, American Brilliant Period uh, crystal. Ernie? Yes. Uh, could you go back to the slide just before this one for a moment? Yes. Okay. And uh, when was this one made? Uh, it, it shows up in Ansonia's 1901 catalog. Okay, interesting. These these themes uh, had been popular for even at that time, certainly well over a century. And uh, oh, yes, definitely yes. Yeah. Um, so this this is as as late as I've seen a production with a, with a theme yeah. like this. And this kind of maybe, you know, this and this could have produced over a span of plus or minus five years. Um, sure. yeah. uh, but the only document evidence I have of it is, is 1901. Yeah, that's that's delightful. Thanks. No, thanks. We'll move past this. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, a New Haven uh, uh, crystal ball paperweight clock uh, with its accompanying uh, bronze uh, uh, monkey on a marble base. Uh, the, the monkey uh, watch holder is, is particularly rare and uh, he has red glass eyes. Uh, this is an eight day uh, uh, movement in this clock. And I'd like to add something too. At the museum, we have something for children and it's like a, a scavenger hunt uh, page. It has, it, we give them this page with, with a list of the clocks that a monkey clock, a bear clock, uh, you know, all the different types of things and they have to go find them and they take a pencil and they have a little sheet with a checkbox and and we found that really the, the monkey is one of them <laughs> that's part of the part of the scavenger hunt for the children in the museum when they come in and they look for things and the parents love it uh, because it kind of occupies their time while they're busy looking at other things in there but it's just to throw that in there. Uh, another uh, uh, Ameri uh, American uh, Brilliant Period uh, cut glass uh, clock case, uh, this time with a, a little Waterbury movement. Uh, this case was made by the Libby Glass Company, uh, probably right around uh, 1905. Uh, this clock was made by the British United Clock Company. Uh, it depicts a, a, a mail courier, uh, but this clock was also uh, uh, you'll find this the same casting that was used for uh, uh, trophies for bicycle races. In this case here, the, uh, the little plaque in front has not been engraved, but I've, I've seen these with, with uh, uh, being awarded for bicycle races as well. This is a particularly rare model. And unlike the American novelty clocks uh, throughout the collection, this one is solid brass. Uh, this clock was made by uh, Young Hans, uh, Germany, uh, probably about 1880. Uh, 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 this is a thin, uh, uh, two thin sheets of uh, cut alabaster in a gilded bronze uh, case with a, a, a very small eight day uh, movement. Uh, this was a bicycle trophy, uh, also by Young Hans. Uh, bicycle riding was very popular at the, the turn of the last century. And um, once again, we have a sheet of alabaster. Uh, I placed these in the museum windows so the light could shine through the alabaster plates, but this, this was in fact a bicycle trophy. Another uh, clock by Young Hans. Um, um, I think we're going the wrong direction again here. We, knew, we need to reverse here, Dan. No. No, we have, I, right. I, two, two, I think we have two pictures of this. Okay. 
Uh, this is uh, by the uh, British United Clock Company. Uh, uh, once again, a solid uh, brass casting of a peacock with a nice little 30 hour movement in it. The British United Clock Company uh, was tied at the hip to the Ansonia Clock Company. Uh, 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 William Davies uh, 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 left Ansonia and went to England and uh, uh, partnered up with uh, his brothers George and Henry, and they formed the British United Clock Company. So a lot of they borrowed a lot of Ansonia's uh, movements and designs for their own uh, uh, clock making pursuits. Uh, this is a, a nice little uh, um, a French uh, um, alarm clock in a uh, solid brass case, kind of a Gothic style. This one's a little bit later because you see uh, this is kind of almost just pre uh, World War One, where you see the 24 hour uh, 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 dial uh, being implemented. This is also by the uh, British United Clock Company, a uh, uh, solid brass casting, um, uh, uh, just a quaint little uh, uh, man and woman uh, uh, carrying, carrying the clock on a litter. Once again, by British United Clock Company, uh, Birmingham, England, uh, uh, nice little 30 hour movement in a, uh, in a wrought iron uh, uh, grill. Uh, type of assembly. This is from the uh, Young Hans Clock Company of uh, Freiburg, Germany. Um, um, alabaster uh, slab uh, in a uh, gilded brass frame, uh, 30 hour movement. Uh, the windmill blades uh, uh, can be rotated manually, but they're not collect, uh, connected to the clock mechanism. Uh, British United Clock Company, once again, um, uh, solid brass casting, uh, just a quaint little uh, gentleman in the window uh, looking out at his garden with the uh, clock incorporated into the, uh, the framework there. Uh, this clock is French, um, uh, French alarm clock, probably 1870, uh, kind of on a uh, Oriental theme. You have the, the Mandarin sitting uh, in the foreground with his little pug dog at his feet uh, with a fan. A uh, little sunburst pendulum and uh, pagoda style frame and the, the little uh, umbrella with bells at the top. Uh, once again, about 1870. Uh, this is a, a combination clock and, uh, and uh, uh, thermometer. Uh, this is uh, by uh, uh, British United Clock Company of Birmingham, uh, alabaster sheet, uh, solid brass case, and a uh, full working mercury bulb thermometer. This is about 1900. Uh, here we have a, uh, a, a, a German yachting trophy uh, made by Young Hans. Um, this is a, 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 a Sterling silver case with a gold wash. Uh, you have the uh, the oars, uh, the uh, the life preserver, and and the uh, inscription uh, is dated on the back. And this was presented in 1905. This is a a, a British Navy uh, military themed clock um, clock and the anchor. Uh, British United Clock Company. Uh, uh, very nice silver and gilt dial uh, with an. Uh, and this is in a solid bronze case uh, with an eight day movement, uh, uh, circa 1890. Uh, this is, uh, um, so again, uh, British United Clock Company. Uh, this is a sterling silver case, uh, twin dolphins, uh, 30 hour movement, um, uh, just a very nice little casting. Uh, this is uh, uh, Ansonia Clock Company. This is one of a series of, of, uh, of clocks that they uh, made. Uh, this has an eight day movement, solid brass case, which is unusual. Most, most of the American novelty clocks are in uh, gilt spelter cases, but this one's solid brass. Uh, this is uh, Ansonia Clock Company. Uh, this is uh, entitled Army. Uh, you have the uh, three stacked rifles, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the bugle, 
uh, and uh, army pen it on top. And the, the clock is, is actually encased in what looks like a, a, a snare drum. Um, this appears in Ansonia's 1901 catalog. And we'll move to the next one, it should be the counterpart. Uh, we'll go one further, Dan. Hopefully you got the other one there. Uh, th and this is the counterpart to Army. Uh, this is Navy. Uh, we have uh, three sta uh, uh, two stacked oars, a, um, a marlin spike hook uh, that supports the Navy pennant. The clock is supported uh, by a um, block and tackle. Uh, three um, uh, three point uh, braided um, uh, rope uh, forms the base and uh, we have the helm wheel and the anchor. Um, both Army and Navy have uh, very rare um, uh, jeweled bezels. If you go back one, Dan, we'll, we'll focus on this. This is um, uh, made by the Young Hans Clock Company about, about 1880. Um, um, a sheet of uh, thin alabaster, um, uh, uh, gilt, uh, gilt bronze frame, 30-hour uh, movement, um, circa 1900. Uh, here's a little French alarm clock, um, uh, eight-day alarm clock, uh, uh, jeweled bezel, uh, really nice uh, uh, blue uh, uh, chapter ring on porcelain, uh, gilt case, um, circa 1900. Uh, this was uh, uh, made by the Yale Clock, clock Company of New York. Um, it's a tiny little uh, pendulum clock, uh, 30 hour. Um, what's unusual about this one is it has the, um, the silver plated stand that it sits on. Uh, and this one dates to uh, the mid 1870s. Uh, here's a, uh, once again, British United Clock Company, um, uh, a wreath of uh, ivy leaves and grapes. Uh, this is uh, made of, uh, of copper, uh, bronze and silver kind of hard to pick up the three colors of metal in the uh, in the uh, uh, photo here, but uh, very nicely done, uh, very, very uh, precise metal work. Uh, kind of an unusual um, braided rope uh, uh, bezel on this one, uh, 30 hour movement uh, circa 1900. Uh, this is uh, just a, a nice little uh, 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 early 1900s uh, alarm clock. Uh, uh, this one was made weighed by uh, 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 Waterbury. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Waterbury had the wasp um, and Sonia had the bee. So this is kind of a counterpart to Aunt Sonia's uh, 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 small table alarm. Uh, this is uh, uh, also by Aunt Sonia, um, uh, circa 1900. Uh, it does appear in, in both their 1895 and 1901 catalogs, so a little bit of a span on this. Um, uh, this is called the Genesta, um, and uh, solid brass frame with a suspended clock. And even though it's not designed to swing, just the impulse of the, uh, the balance wheel ticking uh, imparts some motion to the clock and it does get a little bit of an oscillation going while the clock is running. So it's, it adds a little extra eye appeal to it. Uh, this is uh, uh, um, uh, also made by Ansonia. Uh, it's called the Favorite. Um, gilded, uh, gilded spelter, uh, uh, gilt and silver plated spelter. Um, this was made as a counterpart to a full size version uh, that was displayed at the 1896 Columbian Exposition. And uh, this was uh, more of the souvenir model. Uh, if you could afford the, uh, the full size model, you were it was going to a Fifth Avenue uh, mansion smoking room somewhere. But this is, uh, these were, uh, I think, originally sold for about three and a half dollars and they were far more affordable to the general public. <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, also by Ansonia, another uh, uh, clock suspended in a uh, frame that uh, this one has an eight day movement. And once again, uh, there's just enough oscillation of the balance wheel to cause the, uh, the entire clock to swing back and forth in, in, in the framework there. So uh, I, I don't think it was intended by the factory, but once again, a little, little bonus action. Uh, this is... Uh, um, this is by the British United Clock Company, uh, uh, solid brass um, uh, uh, plate uh, clock, uh, uh, jeweled, um, 
jeweled fringed border uh, with a with a uh, twisted rope uh, design. Uh, full eight day movement. Ah, so I'll just describe all three things that we've got going on here, um, or, or, or at least two of them here. Um, clock to the left is French, uh, circa 1870. It's a, it's a, a night clock. Uh, the movement is in the base. Um, uh, impulse goes from the movement all the way up the, uh, the stem to the, uh, the glass globe up above that would have a small candle or, or a kerosene lamp in it. And the, uh, the globe rotates against the pointer uh, to tell the time at night. Uh, it's a full eight day movement, uh, jeweled escapement, um, a very, very nicely made uh, solid bronze figure. Uh, the clock next to it um, is made by Linskirge, uh, approximately 1880. Uh, the, uh, the little boy uh, um, suspended underneath the clock swings uh, 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 back and forth uh, from front to back of the clock. A uh, full eight day movement, uh, very elaborate uh, gilded bronze ornaments on a walnut case. And that dates to about 1885. Tell me again who made that one? That, uh, that was the Linskirge Clock Company. Okay. All right. Uh, here we have a uh, um, uh, uh, little French alarm clock in the form of a mandarin, a uh, little 30 hour alarm clock. Uh, cast um, cast iron case. Um, unfortunately, uh, um, it's been overpainted, and we need to do some restoration. But the um, the bell is concealed. A uh, hammer comes through the top of the mandarin's head, and the bell is concealed uh, on the underside of the uh, umbrella. So when when it uh, uh, when it rings its alarm, uh, 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 it sounds a little tinny. But uh, and then uh, a small tic tac pendulum uh, swings uh, just underneath the dial. Uh, the clock uh, to the right um, was made by Ian Welch, uh, also about 1870, a sterling silver case. And a little difficult to, to see in the picture here, but you have two, um, two cherubs throwing snowballs at the moon, which is a, a popular Victorian theme from the time. You see it in a lot of uh, lithographs. Uh, here we have a very rare uh, French um, self-illuminating alarm clock. Uh, when the alarm goes off, uh, uh, the, the arm is spring loaded and it, and it can be pulled all the way back and cocked into position. Uh, when the alarm rings, it releases a lever, the, the uh, arm swings upward, uh, the match uh, uh, that, the, uh, that the gentleman holds uh, uh, is stricken against the, uh, the uh, curved uh, plate there and lights the wick in the, uh, in the, uh, coming out of, uh, out of his cap. Uh, <clears throat> this is a caricature of uh, Toulouse-Lautrec. Uh, this clock dates to uh, the late 1890s. Um, Toulouse was kind of at his uh, peak of popularity at that time. And um, for those who collect such things, I'm here to tell you that, that this is an authentic um, uh, French mat striker. There have been many reproductions on the market uh, that have come from Asia. Uh, and the way you can tell the difference between the real thing and, and the fake is this has an oil lamp and a wick coming out of his hat. The others have cut the top off the hat and stuck a candle with a, an impossibly long wick that could only be used once. So uh, this gentleman could be used time and time again. The reason not too many of these survive is because there's been documented uh, records where the uh, match has flown out of the um, out of the holder, uh, set the bed curtains on fire and the whole house has gone up in flames. So uh, this is a rare survivor from um, an attempt to uh, wake up to uh, uh, see the time when you got up in the morning. <clears throat> Here we have another uh, early French night clock from uh, uh, late 1860s, early 1870s. Um, Charming little girl in a, a wizard's um, uh, cape. Uh, there's stars and moons embroidered on her uh, her cloak, as well as her conical hat. Um, the movement uh, once again contained in the base, um, um, and instead of having a jeweled escapement, this is a full pendulum uh, movement, eight day runner. Uh, little oil lamp on the top with the uh, chapter ring, and as it rotates um, uh, until the time at night. 
uh, from her staff there. Oh, uh, this is by the British United Clock Company. Uh, this is multicolored gold. We have white gold, green gold, yellow gold. Uh, and uh, uh, on a piece of, uh, of uh, uh, red uh, agate, uh, solid, solid plate of, of red agate, uh, uh, very expensive uh, when it was made. Um, this has a full eight day movement uh, and a, um, a gilded uh, sterling silver dial. <clears throat> Here's a nice little clock uh, uh, made by Linskirch, uh about uh, 1880 with a, a nice little Majolica bust on the top. Um, pendulum movement, um, uh, full eight day running on, a, on a, um, a walnut base. Uh, this is uh, actually a pocket watch holder in the form of a windmill. Uh, we have a thermometer uh, uh, running up the center there. Uh, the windmill is uh, uh, non-animated, but, but the vanes do turn manually, and you have a little worker with his crane um, uh, hoisting the watch up to the, um, uh, the loading dock where we see some, uh, some kegs, and, uh, and then his sweetheart is sitting down uh, in the doorway down below. Uh, this is... Uh, Although this casting appears in the Ansonia Clock Company, the clock was actually made by the British United Clock Company. And as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, British United and Ansonia were kind of tied at the hip. Um, Davies Brothers did a lot of the designs for Ansonia and vice versa. Uh, this particular clock um, uh, is, is made by British United Clock Company. Nice beveled glass mirror in a solid bra gilded brass case. And, once again, the difference between the Ansonia version and the British United version, uh, uh, the British United solid brass, um, American version is uh, gilded spelter or pot metal. And uh, one of the reasons British United uh, didn't outlast the Ansonia clock company by more than a few years uh, uh, was uh, the quality of their materials. They just simply went out of business uh -huh. because they refused to cheapen their, um, their product. I got it through email. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have a, a, a fairly common uh, a swinging arm clock by Young Hans. Uh, we have a, a, a bronze uh, elephant on a walnut base. Uh, the eight-day uh, movement uh, uh, suspended on a uh, on a, a brass bar with two jewels and, and swings back and forth. It's a small novelty clock by, uh, um, by the uh, um, West Clocks Company in a, a celluloid case. Uh, this uh, dates to about somewhere between the late 20s and the 1930s. But the case is in particularly good condition on this one as well as the dial. Here we have a, a clock uh, um, uh, made by the Bradley and Hubbard Clock Company of the late 1860s. Uh, it was part of a series of blinking eye clocks. So you can see in the video here, the, uh, the eyes are, are moving. Uh, the clock movement was made by the uh, Silas B. Terry Company. It's a, a small 30 hour pendulum movement that's, um, um, that's tied, the uh, eyes are tied to the verge and cause the eyes to swing back and forth. And this is the original paint on this clock. It's been very well cared for. Here we have an English uh, um, uh, uh, alarm clock, a, a replica of a 16th century timepiece. Uh, the eight day clock movement in the drum portion down below uh, uh, is independent. Uh, 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 time and strike movement uh, produced by Thwaites and Reeds uh, uh, approximately 1900, uh, to between 1900 and 1910. The alarm portion that sits on top um, is a separate independent mechanism. Uh, and you can actually turn it. Uh, you see the little pointer hanging down. You rotate the entire top mechanism. Uh, the dolphins uh, uh, run along the, the, uh, the rim of, of the, the clock below and point that at the hour that you want it to ring. And as the hour hand comes along, it uh, presses up on the, uh, on the lever and uh, puts the alarm in motion and rings the bell. How tall is that, Ernie? Uh, probably about 10 inches. Oh. 
I've got to ask the obvious question on that. Yes. Usually the hour hand is behind the minute hand. In this case here, it's on top. Okay. Yep, they're reversed so that it, the hour hand can actually press the lever. Otherwise, otherwise the minute hand would interfere with it once an hour. Yeah, I was going, okay, there must be a way. There is. Yes. Uh, actually, it, it kind of shows up in the picture there. You just have to cut, maybe kind of enlarge it a little bit on your screen if you get a touch screen and, 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 and becomes a little clearer. Here we have a really nice uh, 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 French uh, str uh, strut clock, um, solid brass case, uh, eight day um, movement with a uh, uh, platform escapement. Um, very reminiscent of uh, the wire on top uh, uh, from the motifs of the, of the uh, Paris Opera House uh, that was built uh, in, the, in the late 19th century. Uh, very heavy casting on this one. Here we have another uh, night clock, uh, French, uh, uh, late 1870s, um, rotating globe. Uh, there's a little pointer, I guess it, it must be turned around towards the backside in this photo here. Uh, you can see the tiny little uh, ball hanging down, that's the pendulum. Uh, this clock was made by Eugene, the Eugene Farco Company of Paris. Um, uh, these night clocks come in, in several different forms and uh, this has got a, a marble base and uh, uh, the movements contained uh, underneath the globe there. Here we have uh, a clock by the, uh, uh, the uh, Parker Clock Company uh, dating to the late eight, mid to eight, uh, 1870s. Uh, the trade name on this clock was the parachute. And as you can see, the clock is suspended uh, from the frame um, by four chains. Uh, once again, the interesting thing with this clock is there's just enough oscillation in the balance wheel, which is at the bottom of the movement in, in this clock, uh, to cause the entire piece to oscillate back and forth uh, hanging from the chain. So it um, gives the illusion of a mystery uh, swinging pendulum type of clock, but um, I don't think that was the original intent. Uh, but it's uh, very unusual and very highly sought after um, uh, model from the Parker Clock Company. Here we have a clock uh, uh, made by the Mayer Company uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, either Nuremberg or um, uh, as far as I can tell from Nuremberg, Germany. Um, the Mayer Company made several different uh, uh, animal themed clocks. Uh, there's a pug dog, uh, there's a spaniel, uh, there's a, a, a poodle, um, there's an old woman that holds uh, both uh, uh, a dog in each arm where, the, where there are two tongues. Uh, I have in my own collection a basket with three pug dogs and all three of their tongues are, are animated. Uh, and then I have a cat that um, uh, laps at a bowl of milk. Uh, none of these are currently resident at the museum. But what's interesting about this clock is uh, rather than a typical pendulum clock where the pendulum swings from right to left, this has a transverse escapement and the pendulum swings from, from front to aft uh, inside the uh, casting. Um, there's a, a parallel bar that goes the entire length of the casting there that the, the tail and the tongue are attached to. And uh, uh, so you get that, that double animation effect. Uh, this is one of the more popular clocks with our museum viewers. Everything, the peripherals, the tail and the tongue have to be so- uh, Oh, balanced just perfectly. Yeah, yeah, and the, and that tail is is actually uh, stamped out of a very thin foil, very lightweight. Um, the whole thing has to be balanced just perfectly. What I might mention is the dog tag under uh, hanging from the dog's collar has has uh, uh, the name of the manufacturer, the location, and, as well as the movement being signed. But finding finding uh, 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 finding one of these with its its uh, dog tag uh, still original and intact is, is very difficult <clears throat> uh, here we have uh, three clocks I can describe to you uh, uh, just um, uh, here we have a, a very nice uh, uh, um, young Hans um, uh, swinging arm clock with a solid bronze uh, statue supporting on a red marble base. 
I think I have a set a standalone picture of the other items, Ernie. Here, let's. Okay. I think they're a little bit down the low road here. I think I just have to start that one over again. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Just pause it. I uh, just pause it right there Oops, on man, the I'm foreground. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, in the go. foreground there, we see a really nice uh, uh, French uh, 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 crystal paperweight clock, uh, completely spherical, uh, meant to sit on a desk. Uh, 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 and um, what's really unusual about this one are the green and uh, clear um, uh, rhinestone uh, uh, surrounding the bezel and the green enamel dial. Uh, this would be French, uh, probably circa 1890. Um, about two sizes larger than your average uh, New Haven uh, crystal paperweight clock for, for those that are familiar with them. Uh, to the right here, we have a really nice French uh, 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 porcelain uh, uh, pallet clock, uh, full eight day uh, movement, uh, jeweled escapement, um, hand painted motif on a, on a bronze easel. Uh, this clock was made by uh, Ian Welch. Uh, I believe in the Welch catalog, it's called Harmony for the two doves at the top of the clock. Uh, solid brass casting. Um, this has a eight day uh, pendulum movement, uh, uh, two springs, uh, uh, double wind, two springs, um, full eight day running movement, but the, uh, the double springs are quite unusual for this type of clock. Um, more or less a tic-tac type of escapement, um, uh, meaning that the uh, pendulum's tied direct to the verge without a uh, suspension spring. Uh, very nice clock and a very highly sought after model. <clears throat> Just a nice little small New Haven uh, dresser clock, celluloid case, uh, probably dating to the, uh, the 1930s. Uh, this uh, this uh, little uh, clock was part of a series uh, made by West Clocks. Uh, uh, this is called the Bungalow. And um, there were several different uh, houses and lighthouses and different models of these. Uh, uh, this one still has its original paint intact. And it just has a small 30 hour movement in it. Here we have another uh, uh, clock made by the um, the Parker Clock Company uh, dating to, to the mid to late 1870s. This is in a solid sterling silver case, a uh, very, very beautifully modeled uh, lion. Uh, celluloid dial, a 30 hour movement. Um, and one of the rarer Parkers that, uh, that the company produced. This is also by the, uh, the Parker Clock Company, uh, uh, just about the same era, uh, mid to late 1870s. Um, Studyloid dial, which is darkened over time, but this is also in a sterling silver case. The, the cases on both this clock and the line were made by the, um, uh, the Pearpoint uh, uh, Silver Company in, uh, in Connecticut. Here we have uh, the Ansonia uh, Tower uh, uh, mirror uh, dresser clock, um, solid brass casting, uh, 30 hour movement in the top, um, kind of got ivy uh, crawling up one side there, a little balcony off to the left and a couple little turrets there. Um, one, of the, one of the series of different types of mirror clocks that Ansonia produced. Oh, here's a close-up of that uh, uh, jeweled um, paperweight clock I uh, had uh, described earlier, um, but it gives you, uh, just shows you how nice the uh, the enamel dial on this one is. Uh, absolute pristine condition, um, um, and the original uh, uh, green and, and clear rhinestones. And I, we've looked at the pallet clock before here, so we'll move on. And we've, and we'll move to this one here. This is uh, this is uh, made by the Ansonia Clock Company, uh, uh, circa 1900, uh, oh, be, spread between 1890 and 1910-ish, actually. Um, a Royal Bond porcelain case, uh, um, hand painted, um, very nice, uh, um, high grade uh, round plate, uh, eight day movement uh, with polished lacquered plates, uh, almost the same quality as Ansonia put in their crystal regulators but a very nice example. 
Here we have a very rare um, uh, animated clock uh, uh, made by the Hamburg American Clock Company. Uh, we have a, a clock peddler. Uh, what's interesting with this guy here is that uh, uh, while the clock is running, uh, the full swinging pendulum below, and while the clock is running, uh, there's a, a cam mechanism that causes his head to move back and forth. Uh, this is a full eight day running clock. And um, um, there's a picture of one of these that appeared on Clockwise Magazine uh, back in the, I think the early nineties. And uh, as far as I know, there aren't any other documented examples of, of this particular um, uh, clock uh, that ever seemed to have surfaced since then. Is it known when it was made? More oh, this is probably probably about the 1880s. Uh, the the figure is paper mache. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, um, but it's very nicely very nicely modeled. Yeah, is that uh, repaint or original? No, that's all the original original paint. That's... There's a few steps here and there, but yeah, all original. That's phenomenal. The company uh, you said it was American Hamburg. Uh, yeah, Hamburg American. Uh, Hamburg -American. Uh, on the back, uh, there's a there's a clock uh, face uh, on his back, and uh, it has a, the Hamburg American crossed arrows on it. Right. Yeah. That um, I see. The, I see the company's you know more common products coming in now and then, and um, and researching the company myself, uh, find comments about it having been an unusually good company to work for in terms of uh how uh well they treated their employees yeah they were they were an offshoot and owned by young Hans. actually they were you know uh they were kind of a kind of a, a spur company uh mm -hmm. but young Hans had the controlling interest in them right <clears throat> uh here we have a really unusual uh english uh made uh, movement unsigned but this was made for the Turkish market. Uh, call your attention to the Turkish numerals uh, instead of the Arabic or Roman numerals you would typically find. Um, solid brass case, uh, um, obviously designed to be portable with the uh, built-in handle on top. A very fine uh, uh, English uh, move, uh, movement, uh, jeweled escapement. Um, a very unusual piece, uh, um, once again, made for the Turkish market. Uh, Probably uh, 1870, 1880-ish, uh, uh, and, and more than likely a London uh, clockmaker. Here we have probably one of the rarest uh, um, castings that I've ever come across uh, made by the Parker Clock Company, uh, uh, mid-1870s uh, to late-1870s. Uh, this is solid, solid uh, brass, uh, bronze, and, and silver. Um, difficult to tell the different metals uh, in this. Uh, the, um, the base is brass, uh, the, the figure, uh, the cherub and the chariot, uh, uh, like uh, ship, um, are, um, are bronze. And then the sail is sterling silver, as well as the pennant. Um, this has a very small 30-hour uh, movement in it. But if, if you're able to, to zoom and do a little bit of a close-up on it on your touch screens, you'll find that it also has a, a 30, 31 day calendar uh, attachment. Very unusual clock. Here we have a, a, an interesting uh, uh, clock made by Ansonia. Uh, the, uh, the casting on this is, is solid copper and a combination clock and photo frame. And I, I really like the original photo of the little girl that uh, it's always lived in it. Uh, just she, she just looks very mischievous here, and uh, um, I have never found this one uh, listed in any of their catalog offerings. Uh, but then there were a lot of uh, products that never never made it to illustration. But this is um, in fifty plus years of collecting, uh, I've never come across another one. Here's the clock made by. Um, once again, by the Parker Clock Company uh, of Meriden. Uh, this is a pair point uh, sterling silver case. You have the, uh, the children uh, sledding down uh, um, an icy ramp there. Um, kind of goes in sweet with the, uh, some of the, the others that I uh, uh, shared with you earlier there. Um, 
these are uh, these uh, figures uh, um, uh, were uh, illustrated by Mary Gregory and then uh, uh, modeled um, um, uh, via clock here. But um, very once again a very rare model if you can even find one these days. Here's uh, the Ansonia uh, jumper number one. Um, we have the uh, the German bisque figure that bobs up and down, uh, uh, 30 hour movement, uh, second spit. Um, uh, we're looking at uh, mid to late 1880s on this one. Um, very nice example, uh, fully functional and, and the original uh, bisque figure that's never been broken. Better photo there. And we can see some of the up and down action. There's our clock peddler again, and we can see him in motion now. His head turns very slowly, so. Um, but it uh, goes to the right and then it reverses and goes back to the left again. There's a uh, four, um, four arm cam that runs off the escapement uh, on this one, it pushes him back and forth. Uh, moving on to some, a couple larger things here. Uh, this, this clock is, uh, was made by the, by the Joseph Mayer Company of Seattle it originally came from a, a very upscale um, Seattle department store. It hung over the elevator bank or the uh, escalator bank rather. Uh, four dials. Uh, this ran off of a large um, uh, slave, uh, a master clock that was in the, uh, uh, the department store offices. Uh, and um, When we build our new building, this will be, once again, we hope to be able to suspend this properly. But in the meantime, uh, one of our members uh, uh, made this uh, really uh, uh, beautiful pedestal for it uh, to support, support the weight of it because it's rather heavy. And uh, in lieu of being able to, um, to run it off of a, a large master clock, um, we have a, um, um, a slave, uh, uh, electronic slave uh, stepper in the base there that not only can we use it to uh, keep it synchronized with the correct time, but we can also um, uh, step it forwards and back backwards to, um, uh, for, um, for the change of times for different times of the year. We're gonna move on to a few of the tall cases that we have now. Um, this is English. Uh, um, we have kind of an unusual inverted uh, uh, moon dial on this one, a square dial with inverted moon dial, and very unusual stenciling on the uh, clock hood. Very beautifully painted dial. We have the birds and seconds bit. Can you speak about the inverted moon dial for a moment? Well, um, basically, uh, um, instead of having a uh, um, an arch dial, uh, which were typically where it lives, they just kind of compressed it. Um, um, when we move over, let's see, we'll um, a, a picture here, well, uh, which I think I can describe it just a little bit better. Um, the reason I ask is I have a 30 hour uh, clock in the shop right now for repair the movement and dial. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's just, just kind of a kind of a holdover be before arch dials became popular. Uh, this one's fairly early, uh, uh, probably uh, 18, early 1830s. Um, arch dials hadn't quite, uh, uh, the, the, the white painted dials were just coming into vogue and, and um, um, can you go one further, Dan? There's, um, if you look um, at, no, right there, if you pause it, you can see uh, the top of the disc, the, uh, the tooth, uh, tooth portion of the disc that's up on top. Right. You know, they just kind of really compressed it. Uh, um, 
into the uh, uh, into the dial where normally they have room for both a calendar uh, uh, a calendar indication and a second spit. Here they uh, uh, they just negated the uh, the second spit and uh, made it just a calendar and a, a lunar uh, dial here. So. Um, just changes of styles. Uh, uh, you don't see this this inverted uh, option very often, uh, but it's usually in the earlier uh, white dial clocks. Okay, I think of the earlier white dial as having the Roman numerals on the out. I mean, the Arabic numbers on the outside of the Roman numerals um, a bit earlier than 1830, certainly. Um, and uh, I mentioned to my my client that uh, the inverted lunette on his dial was uncommon. But beyond that, uh, I really have no frame of reference for, for understanding. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and, and some of these just fall into various regional styles throughout the UK. Um, um, kind of at the whim of, you know, uh, both the cabinet maker and the clock maker, how they put these together. Um, so there doesn't seem to be any, any set rule for it, but, um, um, but right. this one's quite early and uh i take a uh, photo of that uh or a screenshot of that oh sure yeah hold on just a second let me set that up got it thank you great moving on um i wanted to speak a little bit about this guy here um this clock came to us kind of in a basket case condition. Uh, it was it was donated. Um, uh, the pine case was in pretty bad shape. The dial uh, had been painted white, had some very crudely uh, hand lettered uh, chapter ring on it that were, was all wonky. And they had taken um, uh, decals of roses and stuck them in the corners and there was wow. some type of a fruit and uh, basket type of thing in the top. And so the, the member of ours that was doing the restoration said, well, you know, uh, do you mind if I strip this dial down? It looks terrible and we can't, you know, we can get have it redone and, and it won't be any worse than, than what it is now. And I said, yeah, we might as well. Well, when he stripped the dial, we found uh, this underneath, uh, 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 a pair of brothers, uh, some of the earliest American clockmakers uh, uh, at the very late 18th, uh, going into the 19th century, uh, uh, Levi and Abel Hutchins. Um, their clocks are very highly sought after in the Northeast. Uh, solid silver dial, beautifully engraved, um, uh, wax chapters. But um, uh, just the fact uh, of the uh, provenance of the, uh, the Hutchins brothers uh, uh, makes it this really a special timepiece and the rarest American clock currently in the collection. You uh, have the original uh, uh, tin can weights filled with sand to run it. Nice pine very, case. Very early, yeah. Um, do you have a sense of the age of that one? Well, they were only in partnership for three years. So we're looking at the late 79, 1790s going into early 1800. Okay. That's more right. than a couple digits into 1800. Okay. Um, Original finials and uh, typical Massachusetts uh, Chippendale style hood on this one. Yeah. Even though it's Massachusetts, uh, do you think there could be any connection between those brothers and um, Thomas Harland of Norwich, Connecticut? They were all contemporaries. Um, uh, they were uh, they were independent on their own, and they also uh, had a partnership uh, that just lasted uh, just just shy of three years, uh, yeah. maybe not even a full three year uh, time that they they made clocks together, and then they went off on their own. Yeah. So uh -huh. yeah, the Harlins, uh, 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 the Hutchins, uh, um, um, Willards were all contemporaries. I have a uh, Thomas Harlan tall case. Uh, movement and, and dial in the shop right now. And um, from what I understand, the uh, the silver engraved sheet dial is uh, typical of Harland as well. Yeah, well, uh, and, and most of the early New England clockmakers. Okay, yeah. so it was fairly widespread that that type yeah, of Yeah, for, for that brief period of time, but, you know, uh, uh, you know, shortly after going into the 1820s, 1830s, the, you know, the cheaper 
uh, white dial uh, white dials that could be uh, imported from Birmingham, England. Uh, mm -hmm. You find those showing up in American clocks, or at least the dial plates, and then uh, being hand painted on this side of the of the ocean. Okay. <clears throat> nice piece. Very nice. Very rare. Well, just to find that underneath uh, several coats of white paint was yeah. really thrilling. Yeah. We have here what is purported to be the the largest. Um, uh, 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 clock that Chelsea ever made. It was uh, it was commissioned for uh, for the Westinghouse Corporation. It sat in their boardroom. Um, we're doing some additional provenance on it. Uh, it was recently donated, but um, we're uh, hoping to apply to the Guinness World Book of Records that we currently own the largest uh, Chelsea clock in existence. It's a um, simple eight day timepiece, but um, probably weighs uh, uh, well over 150 pounds of solid bronze uh, and copper. Uh, magnificent uh, piece. Uh, there's, there's only known that, that two of these were, were made by the company. Um, um, uh, there's no record or, um, or, or anything we've been able to find on the second one, but this one uh, goes all the way back to the, the original outfit uh, 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 that commissioned it, which is a, uh, uh, George Westinghouse uh, for his uh, for his factory boardroom. And uh, what's the diameter? Uh, 24 inches. Wow, amazing. Yeah, it's a big chunk of metal. Yeah. And here we have some attributions. Uh, this was donated by one of our late founding mm -hmm. members of the museum, uh, Ron Beckler. And uh, we've put this plaque there in, in honor of, of his memory. Oh, okay. deceased. Here we have another nice uh, typical English tall case, uh, early part of the 19th century, uh, uh, typical white dial uh, case, uh, 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 walnut veneer on pine, um, very nice example. Here we have the full, uh, full arched uh, moon dial on this one here, and a very nice painting. And this has a Birmingham uh, dial plate on it, <clears throat> where most of them seem to have come from. Here we have a very unusual uh, um, uh, Linskers uh, uh, Beaux Arts style uh, uh, Vienna regulator. Um, this is a um, 14 day runner, um, uh, unusual black lacquer case, um, um, very austere uh, for the for the late Beaux Arts period, probably from about 1914. Uh, uh, about 1910 to about just pre-World War I, uh, uh, so just a very limited period of time. We've got the uh, kind of the late uh, uh, 19th century engraved weights, uh, dial and pendulum, but this very austere um, later uh, style case. Um, engraved glass uh, side lights, uh, very unusual piece, very finely made. <laughs> or hip and knee. Uh, here we have a, a, a nice uh, um, a black forest wood plate dial uh, imported from Germany, probably came with uh, German uh, settlers um, in a, a nice uh, Pennsylvania style, uh, uh, Lancaster style uh, case. Um, uh, this case is made out of cherry and um, typical of, uh, of uh, central Pennsylvania um, craftsmanship. Very nice uh, um, hand-painted uh, dial, typical of, of the Black Forest region of Germany. Um, we won't discuss this one today, uh, um, uh, the movement's out for being repaired. Um, we have a, uh, uh, a monumental, uh, um, uh, Black Forest or, or Eastern European uh, uh, organ clock. Uh, this was made in Prague, um, so it's Czechoslovakian actually, uh, or uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire, uh, in a uh, Biedermeier uh, uh, style case. Uh, there's 150 um, uh, flute pipes uh, in the mechanism. Uh, it uh, plays seven tunes. Um, uh, came came actually from a um, brothel uh, in Prague. Um, uh, here we see the uh, the cylinder. Um, uh, 
The offset flutes, uh, the bass pipes are, are lay horizontally where the, uh, the higher notes uh, are vertical. Um, the one that's kind of sitting at a 45 degree angle actually has three bends in it. And that's the, the deepest uh, pipe on, on the repertoire there. Uh, on the left, uh, uh, you see the pulley to, uh, uh, mechanism to run the, uh, the organ barrel and the bellows. Uh, it takes a, uh, a, uh, a 90 pound weight uh, to, uh, to get it up to speed. And then the typical uh, wood plate, uh, uh, eight day uh, wood plate movement uh, uh, um, with just uh, a separate cam that activates the music. Um, it has six uh, popular tunes uh, of the day, uh, and it plays a, a, a hymn tune on Sundays, uh, um, which is kind of unusual. And the tunes change uh, every night at midnight. Uh, the cylinder uh, 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 is moved one uh, one notch to the uh, to the left, and then it's spring loaded to to go back at the end of the last tune. Uh, can go back one, Dan. Uh, here, uh, if you look, you can see the uh, the uh, the five lead balls. Uh, that's the actual governor for the uh, for the musical portion, and um, it it gets up to speed there. Uh, the clock is eight day, but the the musical uh, portion needs to be wound once every two days because it goes down pretty quick. Um, here we have uh, uh, just a few of our our wall clocks. Uh, um, on the foreground, we have uh, the Ansonia um, uh, 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 Gloria uh, ball swinger, and just a nice assortment of, uh, of uh, we won't go into individuals today, but um, just to give you a little, uh, little uh, uh, hint of uh, some of the other offerings of the museum. Here we have a rare uh, Eureka battery electric uh, timepiece that uh, I believe uh, uh, one of our members has recently restored and seems to be in good working shape now. The unusual balance wheel that uh, regulates the clock. Here we have just a nice selection of uh, early uh, uh, German uh, wall clocks on the left. Uh, one of the earliest production models of Lenskirge uh, with a, a three digit serial number uh, dating to the uh, early 1860s. Um, nice Biedermeyer timepiece uh, in the uh, center uh, with a 30 day running movement. And then a, um, uh, another Lenskirge uh, uh, timepiece from the late 1880s, uh, eight day. Um, uh, more of a production piece than the two handmade pieces to the left of it. Here we have an unusual, uh, 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 this isn't uh, a, a, kind of a replica of an of a animated French industrial clock. Um, while the, uh, uh, the flywheels, the pistons, and the governor uh, rotate, um, um, uh, they're not connected to the clock as you would find in the French industrials. Um, instead, uh, this clock is powered pneumatically. So if you, uh, if you hook up high pressure air to it, um, all the animation will come to life. Um, this is built by a gentleman that, uh, that uh, collects and restores uh, and builds steam engines. Uh, the movement is made by the Boston Clock Company, uh, Tandem Wine, uh, Time and Strike, and uh, he just incorporated the antique movement into his, his uh, rendition of a uh, French industrial style clock. And, um, but uh, when, when piped uh, high pressure air, uh, uh, all the animation runs on it very nicely. Here we have uh, 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 one of the earliest clocks in the collection. Uh, this came from uh, 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 a uh, church in nor Northern Norway. Uh, it's all uh, hand wrought uh, iron. Um, uh, eight day time and strike, um, rather rather loud bell, and it's all all hand forged uh, iron. And uh, clearly, you know, quite early, as you said. Um, yeah, we're lo looking at you know, mid mid 18th century on this one. Mm -hmm. At least I would think. Yeah, our uh, I know that the. Uh, the, uh, the blacksmiths that we have at the uh, museum uh, on the museum complex have looked it over pretty carefully and, and they don't feel that they have the skills to replicate it even though they work with uh, forging iron uh, uh, 
objects of art and utilitarian things. Um, uh, I don't think any of them have thought they'd want to take on trying to replicate it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here we have uh, um, an actual uh, uh, honest to goodness, uh, authentic uh, act of parliament clock uh, from, from George II uh, period. Um, when for a brief period of time, uh, uh, the English parliament put a tax on owning clocks. And um, so uh, these rather large uh, um, public clocks came into being for that short time period of time. This has got a, a, a beautifully um, a lacquered case. Uh, the, uh, uh, this case would have been sent to Japan uh, from England uh, and all the, uh, the hand lacquered ornament applied and then back and had a movement fitted in it. Um, probably, this probably got back to England long after the, uh, the, the clock uh, uh, tax act expired because uh, it's a long voyage from, uh, from England to, uh, to the Orient uh, in, the, uh, in the mid 18 or the mid 1700s. But beautiful lacquer case, uh, beautiful dial chapter. Uh, this has an eight day weight driven movement in it. In the foreground, we have a, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, foreground, we have a um, 12 tune uh, uh, George II uh, bracket clock um, uh, 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 with strikes on uh, 22 bells, um, rather heavy uh, fusy movement. Uh, to the right, uh, an 18 uh, or an 18-tune um, uh, 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 bracket clock by Ellicott um, with 17 bells chiming in it, and a very nice uh, to the left, a very nice Victorian eight-day uh, fusy uh, lantern-style clock. Uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> Here we have uh, a, a, a Worley uh, and Sons uh, um, um, Takuku clock. Worley was more famous for making uh, uh, trumpeter and, and organ clocks, but uh, here we have uh, one of their cuckoo clocks uh, um, in a Renaissance style case, uh, eight day fusy movement, uh, beautifully carved and the uh, little, uh, little medallion in the top arch is where the bird emerges from. <clears throat> Uh, this is one of our antique uh, uh, workbenches uh, with an assortment of uh, tools and, and movements. Um, um, have a uh, advertising clock for New Haven that made the, uh, the true time tellers. Um, um, and just a, a nice assortment of little, little bits and pieces. <clears throat> And that kind of concludes this portion of, uh, of uh, this chapter of our, our brief walkthrough.